Yes, well, I was born at Ivanhoe in 1938, and I was born at, at the light at weight of three pound five ounces. At those times, the planes weren't pressurised and they couldn't fly me out to a bigger hospital. So that was when Nancy brought the, was offered to bring the gear down in a little plane and virtually saved my life. Uh, he now has eight grandchildren and is very proud of the fact that they wouldn't have been, wouldn't be here if uh, he hadn't I hadn't flown the equipment out that saved his life in 1938. She's a bit of a character, the old dear. When she saw me, I was all wrapped up in the clothes basket of all things, and she looked at me and she said, "My God, look at that! It's like a drowned rat, isn't it?" And that was me, yes. I was the, actually the first woman to ever fly professionally in Australia. But uh, some of the doctors wouldn't fly with a woman. <laughs> I got the title for my book from a man who had ordered um, a car to, uh, to get him to Charleville and, uh, and they said, here, take the phone, get some landing instructions. So I took the phone and he gasped, my God, it's a woman. Well, that's the title I gave in my book. No landing strips at all. No, you landed on clay pans and patches where people said that it was clear and you'd ask them what the surface was like and if they'd run their car or truck over it at 40 miles an hour when I arrived and according to how it bumped you'd know what was there and uh, you'd get your wind direction from dust that was blown up. It was amazing what you, uh, you know, the, what you could land on. But I'd had a good training because before that I'd done a tour in the little gypsy moth, landing as near as I could to country shows and race meetings and taking up people for all their first flights. We didn't have maps, we didn't have anything to, uh, no radio. You follow telephone lines if there happened to be one, and they were pretty rare, but where two fences meet, that's a very good point to note, is on the route. We flew very low, about a thousand feet. If you get lost, you always turn to pick up a river if you can, either the Darling, in my case, or Paru. You just learn to navigate by things that exist, where there are bunches of trees, where there's timber, where there's open country. The telephone line, of course, is magnificent because that's, uh, if, you, if you do have a forced landing, the thing is to try and get something to break the telephone line so they'll come out to fix it. Because you've got no other way of communicating with them because there's no radio in any light aircraft in those days. John Flynn founded the uh, organisation uh, to care for the people of far western Queensland. It was based, at, had a base at Cloncurry mm -hmm. and, there, and that's of course where the first flying doctor uh, flight took part when he chartered Qantas to pick up a patient and bring him into the hospital. But um, uh, I knew him quite well. He was more or less a father figure to me and uh, we, we talked about the mantle of safety that he wanted to throw over the thousands and miles of Western Queensland. Little did he realise that it would one day be thrown over the whole of Australia, including Tasmania, where they're very proud of the fact that they can reach anywhere within Tasmania in 20 minutes from their base. And if you know the terrain and roads and climate, in Tasmania, you know how wonderful that is. Without the Flying Doctor, the backcountry, well, it would be a, a loss because no matter where you go on a road or anywhere these days, you know the Flying Doctor's behind you. It's just fantastic, that mantle of safety that covers the whole of Australia.